Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. We are headed to Kennedy Space Center. Yeah, we're gonna go check out the uh, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Yay. Look at how pretty it is out here. I like water in the morning. It's cool. On the Visitor Complex, there is the uh, solid rocket boosters and the fuel tank for the space shuttle. How crazy is that? It's huge. Is the space shuttle the exact same size as that? No, but the space shuttle is inside of this building that we get to see it. But they have it situated like uh, it would be in space. That's what we're doing right there. The go behind the scenes tour. Ooh, I like that. We're here with Adam the Woo. There he is. Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, are you documenting this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why don't you start doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go, like, space it up. Look at this awesome, like, uh, space pod capsule themed uh, payphone. There's a fountain out here that was doing like I guess a, a show of some sort where it was doing the noises of a rocket launch. And there's the, the NASA globe. It's like the universal globe but it says NASA. For the eyes of the world now to look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond, and we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. We will go to the moon and do the other things in this decade, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Man, I can't wait. Also, these metal detectors look better than anything at Universal or Disney. Like, they're themed. Here's some of the stuff we can be doing today. I'm pretty excited for meeting a space person and a private ham. Also, spacesuit of the future? Heck yeah! Hey, my best ten, nine. Of construction on the astronaut hall of fame like i don't even know if you guys can see all the crazy demolition they've done up there and here's the rocket garden up close and personal if you look very closely at this rocket you can see there's a hidden agenda what oh <laughs> a, a gemini titan 2 rocket look at this thing man oh man it's big it's crazy because we're just like here and there's a rocket engine right there that creates enough force to push that thing up into space this is amazing look guys a space butterfly i'm kind of bummed that these two rockets are behind this uh construction wall that we can't see what they are well they look pretty awesome here's the little baby delta rocket look at this thing look at its little teeny tiny fins on the side oh space odyssey 2001 dun dun oh this is a juno one rocket that was used in competition after russia put sputnik into space the U.S. wanted to put Explorer 1, an 11-pound satellite, into orbit on January 31st, 1958. Pretty awesome. Like, this is some real space history right here. We're standing next to a Saturn B-1. Look at this thing. So big. Also, this little thing right here is what they used to hold on. You see the two, like, yellow spots? That's what held on to the rocket and it supported the entire weight of the rocket. Under, one underneath each fin. Right before it was ready to lift off, they would like light the engines, and then seconds before it was ready to take off, it would let go, and then boom, rocket into space. Here's a better view of the B-1. Look at how big it is. That is so crazy. This is a Saturn V F-1 engine. Look at how big this thing is. That is amazing. Just knowing that this thing produces enough power to shove something humongous into space. This is the walkway for Apollo 11. Like this is what Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin walked down to get into the capsule to be set off to the moon. Let's take a walk down it. Oh, this is so crazy. Can you imagine? But like way higher up in the air, of course, but being an astronaut and walking down this pathway, knowing that you're getting into a little tiny capsule that is gonna send you to the moon. That is awesome. This is the white room, which is the last place that the astronauts were before they went into their capsule. 
And that's it, that's all the room they had. I think this is it. Like, this is what they were in. Laying down, ready to be shot to the moon. Holy macaroni. And they got all this storage down on the bottom down there. Mural of the current configuration of the International Space Station and all of the different countries that have been up and stayed in the International Space Station. So the International Space Station belongs to the world? Yeah, well, it belongs to all these different companies came together to make it. European Space Agency, NASA, Canada Space Agency, Japan, and the Russian Federation. Wow, I love how theirs looks like Star Trek. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't also, know look, here's a, a size representation of it. Oh, it's like the a fact that it's, field. it's yeah, just about the same size as a football field, wider than a football field, about wow. twice as wide. It's pretty neat. So we were just talking with Adam about this, the NASA symbol, which we all know, or at least I know, is called the, the meatball. No, Nobody knows They call that. it the meatball. You're the only person that knows <laughs> that factoid. And we were trying to figure out why they call it the meatball, because it doesn't look like I a don't meatball. Think they really call it the meatball. Well, ask the astronaut. We're going to have lunch with an astronaut. Are they going to serve meatballs? Uh, no, there's... <laughs> it would be amazing if we ate meatballs today. <laughs> they're going to serve private ham. <laughs> I think that's our astronaut's name, but we're going to ask private ham about the meatball. This is the best. The best food reference vlog ever. Here's the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle. Adam just said that. Sorry, <laughs> my fault. I'll go on this side and repeat it. The lighting is terrible. Oh look, here's the meatball again. Here's the only thing that they, oh it's made out of Legos. Look at this, the Mars exploration rover made out of Legos. That's pretty neat. I can't believe we sent something to Mars that was made out of Legos. You wouldn't think it would last. Actual size, by the way, and uh, Mars, the only planet populated entirely by robots. Oh, look at, really have real oh, they're not real pockets? Yeah, they are. Yeah, look at that jagged. I'm you're like, I you're like a. Been to the moon at this point. Yeah. I think I might. <laughs> it's pretty great. Should I get this or that? I was kind of eyeballing that one. I at least want to try it on. I kind of want this dragon shirt. Let's That's pretty it. sweet. Can be in a space oh yeah, space guy. Just like a real astronaut, we we're helping Adam put on his flight suit. Yep, us astronauts put our legs in our pants one leg at a time, just like the rest of the real civilians. You're totally gonna fall over, aren't you? I'm ready to blast off. This is how you wear this, right? Yeah, perfect. Do it. Now Jen's trying on the same. Oh yeah, with your boots. Yeah. Look at that. Some people call her the space cowboy. <laughs> That's gonna fit you much better than me. That actually looks pretty sweet. Heck yeah. <laughs> You're like reporting for duty, sir. It this looks is, cozy. Yeah, this is like a onesie but better. This is like a snuggie. Yeah. Like a spacey. Like, like a space gang. Yeah, space gangs. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more stuff in this store than when I was younger and I came here and all we got was like astronaut ice cream and that's it. You looking at a, a space cat's bag? If you put this as your default picture, this video would go viral. <laughs> all right. Cats rule the internet. They We're doing it. Space dogs. Uh, not as cool. Okay. The meatball wearing a uh, Christmas hat. <laughs> Two this for ten bucks. This is just like your Back to the Future thing. Like now it's going to be a meatball because you're saying it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no. Like not. The Back to the Future canoe? That's totally real. I know. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Freeze dried ice cream. We're in the room called Exploring Mars. Here's the SLS crew vehicle. Full size development model. That's pretty neat. It's pretty like small in all reality. Are we going there? I think so. But what's up with this plum bob in here? Oh. So this is a mock-up of the crew vehicle. Oh, okay, this is their seat in the crew vehicle. That's pretty neat. I think that maybe that's for measuring out how they like lay in it, all these like different tape measures and stuff like that. Lots of like fun little interactive games that you could be playing in here. Ooh, the athlete rover, all-terrain, hex-legged extraterrestrial explorer. Pretty neat, it's just a little mock-up of it. It's actually only just two legs of it. A space exploration vehicle. I think that these are all things that are under development at NASA right now. Some replicas of the different Mars rovers that we have up on Mars right now. It'll be interesting to see like Sojourn is so tiny and then Spirit and Opportunity or like this big. And then our most recent one, Curiosity is huge. It's like the size of a small car. And of course Curiosity is still like out there roaming around on Mars. 
doing its thing. Pretty soon, this is gonna be us See, look, he's right. eating lunch with an astronaut. So we get to have Wendy Lawrence as our uh, astronaut that we get to talk to. I wonder what is what maybe Private Ham called in sick today. We've been invited to the buffet. Yeah, look at this is pretty nice. Here's where they here's where they trick you and put you in the salad first. Go right for heart of palm salad or pigeon peas and yellow rice. Ooh, what is this? Red snapper. That's pretty nice. Moho chicken and pizza. Yes, and then the same buffet over there. There's our astronaut right there. That's Wendy Lawrence. She's gonna talk to us about space. This is pretty epic. The astronaut hasn't even started talking yet, and this is really inspiring. Like just watching people who have been to space and everything that it takes to get to space. And during her years at NASA, she flew four missions, including one on Atlantis. She had a flight with Astrolab, two flights to the Mir space station, and the return to flight up to the International Space Station. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce to you today, astronaut Wendy Lawrence. Well, thank you and good afternoon. Let me also welcome you here. I like to call this kind of the lighter side of space flight because this is my opportunity to share some fun stories with you. There are a couple of things that you just have to experience before you truly appreciate what they feel like. First and foremost is riding the rocket. How many of you have gotten a chance to do the Space Launch Experience ride? It's fun, but it's not nearly like the real rocket. <laughs> the shuttle produced 6.5 million pounds of thrust. And even though I spent at that point in time probably hundreds of hours in the simulator, it is not like the real rocket. And you're lying there, and the main engines are all light off, and you can feel the vehicle shake a little bit. And then those side rocket boosters light off. You saw it in the video. Oh my gosh, it's like somebody just kicked you in the chest, and it just keeps getting heavier after that. I remember lying there on my back thinking, oh my gosh, I, I can't breathe. This is so heavy, but wow, the power and the acceleration, this is incredible. Oh, look, look out the overhead window. We can see the flame curls around. Oh, that's so cool. I can't breathe, can't breathe. Oh, can I put my arm out in front of me? No, no, too hard. Now, the other thing that you have to experience to truly appreciate is being weightless all the time. And I struggle to describe it in words. It's the most amazing feeling. And once you get used to it, and your body adapts to it, and you understand how you need to move around. It is just fun. And of course, you have to play with your food. So the people who've been in space before, we always call them the veteran astronauts, they'd like to pick on the first-time flyers, the rookies. And they would give you kind of this um, rite of passage, so to speak. They would give you an M&M. Personally, I think peanut M&Ms work best. And they would say, throw this in your crewmate's mouth. And then your crewmate was probably about a good six to 10 feet away from you. Your brain hears the word throw. You think, oh, I know how to throw. I throw a ball on the earth all the time. So you're there and you wind up and you do your traditional motion. Well, what your brain then forgets is, hey, you are not on earth anymore. You do not need to compensate for gravity, okay? You do not need to put an work on the M&M. So you've done your wind up and your release and you let go and boom, you beat your crew member in the forehead and you laugh at yourself and go, oh, you guys set me up. I don't need to throw, I just need to push because everything will travel in a straight line. So it is very fun to experiment. We like to squeeze water out from our drink bag. I wish I had a video to show you how fluid mixes in space. One of my flights, we squeezed water out and we squeezed orange juice out and it very slowly mixes together. Without gravity, really things behave in a fundamentally different way. And that's really one of the reasons why we have the space station is to do that science, is to begin to understand what happens when gravity is no longer the dominant force. So we will tell you, even though we're playing with our food, we're actually learning a lot about physics. It is a fun environment. It truly is all your dreams like flying around like Superman um, and a bird come true. And I wish you all could experience it, but it's uh, just a magical feeling. And then having the opportunity to look back at this planet. Uh, we work really hard to take great pictures of it. Incredibly hard, even with the technology we have now, to capture the intensity of some of the colors we see. Um, 
I have many, many favorite sites looking out the window. I've seen the northern lights, I've seen the southern lights, uh, I've seen a volcano erupt. Uh, on one flight, we flew right over the top of Mount Etna in Sicily, and we could see right down into the middle of the crater and see the orange magma. We could see it with our own eyes, and my God, that is so cool. Um, we could see all the fires from the uh, kind of native tribes that wander through northern Africa at night, so that's really pretty to see. Sunrises and sunsets are really, really cool. Can you talk a little bit about re-entry and re-acclimating to gravity? It's not fun. <laughs> and I don't like it, honestly. Um, again, the human body is just an amazing thing. It get, pretty quickly it gets used to being weightless, and then sadly, um, you got to come back to gravity. And you th would think, since you've spent virtually your entire life in this environment working against gravity, that that would be the easier transition. It's not. You start the entry process, and probably the last 20 minutes of entry is when we really began to feel gravity pulling on us again, and you would just get sucked down to your seat, and you'd just get lower and lower, and gravity would get heavier and heavier, and then you'd land and go, I just want to sit here. <laughs> I feel like a sack of potatoes. I mean, you kind of walk like this. <laughs> Um, it doesn't take all that long to get used to gravity again when you haven't been in space for a long time. And my longest flight was only about two and a half weeks long. You know, we've got the crew members coming back from the space station after six months. In March, pay attention, middle of March, we'll return um, Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko and NASA astronaut Scott Kelly after spending 365 days in space. Theirs is going to be a much longer transition, and um, they'll go through I would guess with those guys, it would probably be a little bit longer of a rehab period. Probably about a month or so of a very um, specific physical rehabilitation program to get them used to working against gravity again, and to do it in a way that they don't injure themselves. But um, they're not going to have fun their first few days back on Earth. That I know. Well, that's a good question, and that's why um, I'm actually a retired astronaut, but virtually all the retired astronauts participate in a program called Lifetime Surveillance of Astronaut Health. So all active astronauts get a, an annual flight physical, and the retired astronauts, we go back to the Johnson Space Center once a year for our physical as well. So we're, we're lab rats. They're trying to determine if there is a, a permanent medical problem that will surface later in life because um, we have been up in space. So still can't quite answer that question yet. We just took our picture with her. Look at how cool this is. Like a replica of the footprint on the moon, which is still there because there's no atmosphere or wind on the moon. Look at that. We're getting on a bus. My name is John. I'm on staff with the education department here at the visitor's complex. And it's my privilege to be your guide for the tour today. We're going to be together about two hours. At the end of that time, we will take you to the Apollo Saturn V building where you can see equipment uh, that uh, was developed for our trips to the moon. A little redstone rocket. We replaced the warhead with a one-person mercury capsule. And three weeks after the Gagarin flight, on the 5th of May, 1961, Alan Shepard crawled inside, was lofted out of the atmosphere and 300 miles out over the ocean, about 480 kilometers. Suborbital trip as it was, he nonetheless got out of the atmosphere and therefore became the first American spaceman. Our first stop was here at this viewing center where they've got these bleachers set up where people would come and they would watch launches. They would watch shuttle launches really, really close to the launch pads. Uh, a lot closer than I've ever been. The closest I've ever been was out at the vehicle assembly building for a shuttle launch. So you can see this is pretty amazing. This is one of the like VIP seating areas. Not a lot of people got to see shuttle launches from here. But I did happen to see an Atlas launch from not these bleachers, but a little bit further down that away from that pad right there. Pretty neat. So yeah, here and here are the two shuttle pads that they no longer use anymore. And then here are all the private industry rocket pads over there. So you can see off in the distance the VAB. Hopefully we'll get to go and see the VAB, or at least come close to it, but they say that that American flag on the side of the VAB is the size of a football field. Just to give you some perspective on how big that building is. Modifier right there. One. 
purpose and what program to the ladies and gentlemen you'll not find it in our gift shop this is nasa's sewage treatment plant yeah. we have a piece of charred structural steel part of the world trade center from the tragedy on 9 11. We, along with uh, quite a few other fire stations around the country, were honored with that and turned as a memorial to those firefighters that gave their all. Up in the forks of the tree, the tallest tree on the opposite side, is a large, dark object that is the oldest and largest of the American bald eagle nests on the property. Wildlife now tells us it was in the tree in 1961, and eagles have been hatched out there each year. Is that a big nest? It uh, weighs in seven, maybe 800 pounds. Let's call it 350 kilograms. Almost four Empire State buildings by volume inside this building. That's how big it is. Three stripes you see are doors. There are two on this side, there are two on the other. Each of those doors is the exit from a separate assembly location. In theory, we could have been building four balloon rockets at a time. Never did it, but we had the locations for it. Now, when we open those doors, the entire height, they open to 456 feet, 137 meters. And when we brought a moon rocket out, that rocket's tower cleared the door frame by the height of just one of the stars on the American flag. That's all the clearance we had. Shuttle, we opened the doors halfway to get the shuttles out. As we come up by, you'll see how the uh, big doors open sideways at the bottom. That's to be wide enough to accommodate the crawler and the mobile launch platform. This is an old shuttle launch platform where they would put together the shuttle on it and it would actually roll out on the crawler and they would launch it from on top of this pad. Speculation only, but these may be used in the future uh, by private concerns and they can do that between our launches for deep space. And weighing in at uh, about 9 million pounds, we feel we needed to bolt it down even during hurricane. Here's the new pad for the SLS, the new space launch system. It will move it over and set it down inside the building in bay number three. We take the piece off. And then you can see here all this gravel path is the uh, crawler track. And you can see some of the marks left over from a crawler. So there's a mobile launch platform that is up on top of the crawler. Designed built for us by the Marion, Ohio Power Shovel Company. We got a, quite a deal. We only paid about a dollar a pound for them. <laughs> They weigh in at six million pounds a piece. If we keep the speed down to that 0 0.8, 0 0.9 miles per hour, we can do pretty well on fuel economy. We can get about 37 per foot. So I think this is 39 a. So shuttles used to launch from here, but now it's just used for SpaceX, or it's being modified for use by SpaceX. It might be 39B. This is a launch tracking camera for the upcoming February launch. That thing is awesome. So they're kind of showing it off. Like this all represents everything that launched from that pad over there. All of the Apollo missions and all of the space shuttle missions are all represented on this sign. And then the other sign shows what all was launched from this pad over here showing off their five Apollo launches and the rest of the uh, space shuttle program. So the one on the left here is 39A, which has been taken over by SpaceX for their launches. And the one on the right here is 39B, which uh, still stands as it did during the space shuttle era. So this trailer right here is a launch tracking camera. So if you ever see one of these driving down the road, you'll know what it is. And look at this old bunker right here. I don't know what it's from or what it's for, but it's cool looking. And then you can see the beach right there. Like we're right on the water. 39B, I found out what it's being modified for and that's for SLS, the new space launch system, which replaces the shuttle program, which is uh, just the slightest bit smaller than the Apollo rocket. So out here by the pads, lightning strikes are a very common thing. So much so that all of the handrails here are grounded right there for lightning strikes. It's pretty neat. This little white looking tripod thing here actually measures the static buildup in the air before each rocket launch to make sure that there's not too much. If we had had an explosion on one of these pads, the fireball would have reached out three miles in all directions. And so they kind of thought it was a good idea to have the building 3.4 miles back. Hmm. 
SpaceX, having looked at our safety record for launches, has not worried about that, and they have put up a small assembly facility right there at the launch pad that they will be using. Over here, hydrogen and oxygen tanks separated by a great deal of distance. Water tower at both of these launch pads, not for cooling, but for sound suppression. When the Saturn V lifted off from either of these pads, it created so much sound energy that it would enter the bedrock and be transmitted clear across the continent and out in California. It would register on seismographs reporting an earthquake in Florida. At launch time, we would have that tank full of fresh water, 300,000 gallons in the tank, uh, about another 100,000 in the pipes. And we would dump all of that water on the launch pad and platform in 20 to 25 seconds. And it would absorb sound energy convert it to heat energy, we get a huge blip of steam, but we would get less shaking, less damage that way. You got a gator in the ditch. Yeah. It's an issue to our security system. There's the nose cone for the SLS. So we get to get out of the bus here on our last stop, and there is a representation of the size, okay, of the size of the stripes and the stars. So. As you can see here, Jen is laying down and not even taking up one full stripe. And that is a representation of how big the flag is on the side of the VAB. So if Jen were laying up there, sideways, on the VAB, we would barely even be able to see her down here at the bottom of this little red stripe. And then this is the actual size of the stars that are up in the star field. This is an armored escape vehicle. An armored personnel carrier that offered Apollo and space shuttle astronauts a safe vehicle to get out of danger at the launch pad. So if like something went wrong at the launch pad, they would load all the astronauts in here and drive them away real quick. They got a new version of it that looks like a tanker truck with actual tread tires rather than tracks like a tank. So it probably goes faster. This is a replica of the emergency escape pod that straps to the top of the Orion capsule that will go on top of the SLS. Pretty much, if anything goes wrong, you, all the astronauts can climb into this little tiny space right here, and this will detach from the crew vehicle and hopefully get the astronauts down to safety. This is the crew walkway that was used during the space shuttle years to get the crew up and into the space shuttle. Pretty neat, when they tore apart 39A and 39B, they saved this one as like a piece of history. Oh, Pretty this amazing. Is the thing that we walked through. Yeah, sort of, but this one was the one for the space shuttle. We walked through the one for Apollo. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Wow, look at this. So you're saying... You're Probably wait, 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 hold on. Let me, let me do something, because this looks like it just attaches to the Orion capsule, and then the Orion capsule also That's what goes they go off. In. They're in the Orion capsule They're the whole time. They're not in here. Okay, because I was right. like, they have to crawl in this tube and wait until they get back to Earth? I think that that tube contains all of the rocketry and this top part probably contains a lot of the fuel that makes it go from zero rocketry, rocketry. You just yeah called, you just said ro you just went there mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's what it is it's rocketry in this this capsule this will take the orion capsule from zero to 500 miles an hour in three seconds the proper name for this little nose cone thing here is the launch abort system did you know that 250 billion ping pong balls could fill the vab my question is why why ping pong balls why not like water? Like you could put X amount of gallons of water in the VAB. Nobody can really understand the magnitude of ping pong balls. Kind of sad that they left out the rest of the John F. Kennedy quote. Where's the other stuff? The other thing. Or the other thing, sorry. Yeah, those other things. This is a pretty great looking mural. So this is launch control for Apollo 8. This is awesome. It's not a mock-up. These are the actual consoles for Apollo 8. This is awesome. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, we are actually happening. Walking out and we're going to be walking into where there's an actual Saturn V here. 
This is a moon rocket. This is what they use to take people to the moon. Goodness. That is big. Holy cow. This thing is so big. Like, look at the people down at the front end of it down there. It's huge. And this is an astronaut van, what they would use to transport the astronauts to the rockets for space missions or for moon missions. I like the, the sweet curtains in there. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk from the back all the way to the front so you guys can get an idea of the size of this thing. And there it is, all the way to the front of it. Holy macaroni. Here's the service module. That is where the astronauts would sit as they were sent into orbit around the moon. They have a little sample of moon rock here that you can actually like reach in and touch. It's pretty neat. I don't know if this is the exact one, but they said that they had a moon rover here that was made from spare parts of other moon rovers because we've never brought one back from the moon. We're in the treasures gallery. This is the Apollo 14 capsule. This has been in space and returned. Oh, look at all like the damage and stuff on the bottom. That is way cool. And the parachute pouches. how awesome this is. This is a piece of the Aquarius lunar module from Apollo 13 that was given back to Kennedy Space Center in appreciation for bringing the boys back home safe. Look at this, this is the flight plan from Apollo 7 and you can see all like the different notes and stuff that the astronauts had to write into it. These are the different like progressions of spacesuits that we came up with throughout the 60s. Very cool, from different companies and stuff like that. Wow, that is way cool. This one looks crazy. This looks like the ones that you would wear underwater. Right? This one looks cool too. This is uh, Roger Chaffee's personal watch. He was one of the astronauts that died in the fire in Apollo 1. This is the flight suit that Jim Lovell wore in the Apollo 13 capsule. This is awesome. That is a huge piece of history. Look at this, solid rocket boosters and the external fuel tank from the space shuttle. This thing is gigantic. We're in the Atlantis building. We just watched a little pre-show and now we're in this area waiting for the big reveal. had to switch to the GoPro because we ran out of batteries for the other camera, but this is the Canada arm and they use this to help assist with missions and they could actually like strap an astronaut to the end of it out there and the astronaut could go in on a spacewalk to go repair whatever they go up to space to do or to help release payload or any of that other stuff. Here's something that's pretty interesting. On the space shuttle, right? Back here, we have the engines. That's like the, the horsepower of it. This whole center section right here is all payload. Nothing else goes in there aside from whatever they're taking up to space. The Canada arm folds down into it, but like satellites, you know, pieces of the space station. And then up here is the living quarters for the astronauts. So they would fly up here in the front and then everything down below is all living quarters. So that's pretty neat. We just heard a lady who you can see her little laser pointer going around, but she said that all the damage on this tile up here was from launch. Like a lot of stuff in the flame trench being blown around and hitting the outside of the space shuttle. So crazy being this close to a space shuttle. Like we're right here. I can hear my echo of my voice inside of the engine cone here. It's so awesome. This is a main engine from the space shuttle. Look at all, this is all just like fuel and combustion and just everything that would fire together to shoot a huge flame 
out the back end here. So let's take a look inside. Look at that. So everything would come together. Ooh, do you hear my echo in here? Coming out of those little nozzles right there to create this giant flame that was so powerful that it could lift that space shuttle that we just looked at and the solid rocket boosters and the fuel tank off the ground. That is amazing. Look at the underside of this thing. I'm gonna try to get this on the good camera. Oh, look, they got a slide. I don't know why, but they do. We should take the slide down, I think. Let's see if the battery will last for a little bit for me to get you guys. We wanted to go down the slide, but they closed it right as soon as we got to it. I missed it. Darn. We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. Oh, we made it. I knew we would make it. <laughs> look at this thing from underneath. Holy macaroni. It's so massive. These are the actual tires that flew on STS-135. You can almost see the first touchdown spot right here. Like this is where they first hit, you can see. And then they started rolling. That's pretty amazing. Look, there's the one on yours. It's like the tread underneath. It's an Astro van. This is what they took the astronauts out to the pad in. This thing's awesome. It's just an Airstream, like a converted Airstream. Still has the same curtains as the other one that we saw. The greatest curtains ever. Look at how awesome the fountain looks at night. Very cool. Now that was one heck of a fun day at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, doing all the tours and meeting an astronaut. Can't thank Adam enough. He invited us out there and we had a blast. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, that's a nice looking donut. There's a lot of ice cream on there. The beer, I don't know if the beer goes real well with donuts, but. Oh, hey, I'm Adam the Woo from YouTube slash Adam the Woo and YouTube slash The Daily Woo. And now it's time to pay the price. Oh. Oh.